Okay, quick little video here for 8.4 slope of a line. Some 43 million Americans have one or more disabilities, and the number is increasing as our population is living longer. In 1990, the United States enacted the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. The ADA Accessibility Guidelines outline building code requirements for public buildings and facilities. Let's look at access ramps. They are required to have no more than one inch of height for every foot of length. That's a 1 to 12 maximum ratio, since there are 12 inches in a foot. Also, if a ramp exceeds 30 feet in length, a rest stop is required along the way. Take this hypothetical problem. The county library is being remodeled. Plans are being drawn for the construction of a ramp to the main entrance. Given the 40 inch height of the combined steps that lead to the main entrance, and the 30 foot distance from the parking lot to that entrance, would a simple straight ramp meet ADA requirements? To comply with ADA requirements, the height to length ratio, also called rise to run, should not exceed a 1 to 12 ratio or 1 12, which equals 0.083 where 3 is repeated. Converting the 30 feet to inches gives a ramp length of 360 inches to the main entrance. So the ramp's ratio of rise to run is 40 to 360, or 1 to 9, or simply 0.1 repeating. We conclude that with the 30 foot distance from the parking lot to the library entrance and the 40 inch height to access it, a straight ramp would rise too quickly or would be too steep to meet the ADA maximum slope requirement of 1 to 12. A possible solution would be to build a switchback ramp that changes direction by 180 degrees one or more times at an intermediate landing. This would increase the length of the ramp and therefore reduce its ratio of rise to run. Perhaps next time you see or ride an access ramp, you might remember this exploration and appreciate the mathematics that went into its design and construction. The ramp's ratio of height to length helps us visualize the mathematical formula for the slope of a straight line. Since two points define a line uniquely, given any two points in the positive or a negative slope a and b with coordinates Good. x1, y1, and x2, y2, respectively, the slope of the line is defined by the ratio of the vertical rise along the y-axis between y1 and y2 to the horizontal run along the x-axis between x1 and x2. We express this ratio of the change in y over the change in x between the two points as the quotient of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I prefer the expression change in y over change in x, because not all lines actually rise. It allows for a line to rise, a positive slope, to fall, a negative slope, or to be horizontal, a zero slope. Let's do another slope computation. Okay, after watching a couple of those videos with her explaining the difference between the rise over the run, how to find the slope, and showing us the wheelchair ramp, which we have an example like that coming up in our notes. But a couple things that I want you to add to the front of the notes by your um, vocabulary here. It's kind of like your little cheat sheet, so you'll have this out when you need it to look at if you have a quiz for today's homework. And kind of like what we saw in the video today, what you always want to know to find the slope is what over what? Excellent. Rise over run. 
That's also known as your the vertical change over your horizontal change, right? That's the same thing as rise over run because your vertical is your rise, your horizontal is your run. If you put it in a picture form, it'd be either your rise over your run, if we used arrows on a picture form like that. And what is it if we rise up? Is that positive or negative if we go up? Positive. That would be a positive, so put that there. If we go down, if we, that would be negative. negative. How about for the run? If I run to the right, that would be positive. And if I run to the left, that would be negative. Now also in that last video, we found that you can use a formula if given two points on that line, that you take your y's are always on the top, all right? Your y minus y over x minus x. And they use y, I think y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. That just means from the different ordered pairs. The main thing here, always, always, always remember the y's are on the top. Okay, now these are great little cheat sheets, but what do all of these do? These will all give me what? Slope. Yes, this all equals your slope. That's what you'll use to find your slope. Rise over run, which is y minus y over x minus x, to find the slope. Now, here is that building axis ramp. This one, this building access ramp, has a rise of 2 feet and a run of 24 feet. So would that be 2 over 24 or 24 over 2? 2 over 24. Okay, because it's rise over run. And they're saying our rise is 2 feet. What is our run? 24 feet. Now simplify that. What do I get? 1 to 12. So in words, like from the video, how can I explain that? What did we just figure out for this ramp? Then this ramp has for every what? 1. Every 12. Every 12 feet, there's 1 foot increase height. Right. For every 12 feet we run, we go up a foot. Run 12 feet, up a foot. So, if I want to have something three feet tall, how long would it be? 36 feet. It would be 36 feet. How about if I wanted to ramp 10 feet tall, who, what, how long would it be? 240. Well, if there's 1 to 12, 120. Yeah, there you go, because then you take 12 times 10, you'd get the 120 feet long. Now let's look at the one they give us. What was that, the ED? ADA. ADA, the American Disabled Association, ADA, right? Yeah, ADA. Would this work for the ADA, or is this not a good example? It will work. It will work. Well, let's convert it to inches. What would it be? 24. One inch to 12 inches. Okay, because one foot is how many inches? So now we have 12 inches over, what's 12 times 12? Takes you back to your square root. Excellent. Inches. Simplify that. 1 over 12. Goes back down to 1 over 12 again, doesn't it? So is that meeting there? 88? Yeah. Alright. Alrighty, so let's go on to the next one. Slope of a line. Given two points on a non-vertical line, you can find the slope of the line using this formula rise over run, which means the distance of the y coordinates, or the difference of the y coordinates over the difference of the x coordinates. Now they kind of showed us here. Here is a coordinate. They've got 5 and 4, and they have 3 and 2. They've, you can take any two points on this line you want, but I'm not going to want to pick any dots in here or here, any points, because then you're going to have to work with what? 
Sections. Fractions. I'm going to try to find points that are right here on these intersections. So we'll take those two points, and as we know, what comes first in our ordered pair? X. We have our X and our Y, our X and our Y. So on the top, did they take the top one minus the bottom one, or did they go the bottom minus the top? Top. Yep, because they went... They went uh, 4 minus 1, so they went 4 minus 1. Those are my y's on top, so then I have to go 5 minus 3 on the bottom. What does that equal? 3 over 2. Can I simplify that? No. Nope. And when we're talking slopes, we don't turn them into mixed numbers. We'll just leave them as improper fractions. So our slope is 3 over 2. So that means... That's rise over run. So if I start here, I can run a positive 2. So I'd go right 2, up 3. See how that works? So I could do another one without even graphing it. Right 2, up 3. Or I could go backwards. Left 2, down 3. Left 2, down 3. See how you can see, keep continuing your line with that slope now? <coughs> also, you can just look at your graph. Rise over run. We'll start here. Let me erase all this. It's nice and neat. Now say I want to get from this dot to this dot. I could go this way and up, or I could go this way and over, right? You can't count the dots on the slanted line. Never count those as your slope. All right, so either way I go, let's go this way first. I would go, I would run a positive, two, so run is on the bottom, and I would rise how many? A positive three. Look familiar? All right, so just by looking at the graph. Well, what if I went the other way, Mrs. Lennon? Well, let's try it. If I went this way, if I rise how many? So now I'm, the rise is on top, and then I run two. We still end up getting the same answer, don't we? But what if I go from the top down to the bottom? Think I'll still get the 3, 2? Well, let's go from the top over. How many did I have to get over? I had to go. So what is from here to here? Plus or minus 2? Minus. A minus 2, does that go on top or bottom? Top, bottom. Because I, I ran, running is left to right, so I ran a negative 2, and then I, our rise is what? One, two, three down. So is that what? A negative three. Oh, look at what happens. I have a negative three over a negative two, which in all actuality is what? Three over two. Because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So you still end up with three over two, either way you do it. Couldn't you just count, like, on that problem, just so you can count up three, then over two, so you still get the same answer instead of going through all the math problems? That's what we just did. Yep. That's what we just showed you here. Counting and counting. And that ended up being the same thing as what we got when we did y minus y over x minus x. So there's two ways you can find it. But you're not always going to have a graph to work with. On your homework, you just get two points. Here they are. Figure out your slope. So let's look over here. Here, let's practice this one then without doing the y minus y over x minus x. To go from here to here. You can go this way and up, this way and up. Maybe you want to go from top to bottom. It doesn't matter. I'll give you a couple seconds to put your slope down. Rise over run. See what you come up with. In the long run, we'll all end up with the same answer after we simplify. Hey, if I go from here over here, what's my run? Three. three. So positive three on top or bottom? On the bottom, a positive three on the bottom. And then from here up, I had to rise how many? Plus or minus five? Plus. So I have a positive five over a positive three. What is my slope? Five over three. A positive five thirds. 
Is my line on this graph positive? Yes. That's a good sign because we have a positive, we say it's a positive 5 thirds. Well, at least our positive graph. Now let's do our x's. They give us our coordinates here. 1 and 2, 4 and 7. You want to go top minus bottom or bottom minus top? Bottom minus top. Bottom minus top? Okay, that's fine. So let's start with the y's first. So I'm going to have 2 minus what? 7. Seven. So then on the bottom, I'm going to have 1 minus 4. What is 2 minus 7? A negative 5. What's a 1 minus 4? A negative 3. What's a negative divided by a negative? So you end up with a positive 5 over 3 for your slope. Either way you do it, you come up with the same answers. Right? Another one. What kind of slope is this, positive or negative? negative? Negative. So hopefully when you're all done, you have a negative answer or you did something wrong. Do you want to do y, over, y minus y over x minus x, or do you want to do the counting first? Y over y. OK, let's do, our, do that first then. Let's do the top minus the bottom. So if I'm going to do the top minus the bottom, what do I put on the top for my y's? Negative y. One minus, what do I put here? One minus? Negative Yeah, good job. A negative four, so one minus a minus four, all over two minus? Seven. Seven. Now let's simplify. This turns into a what? Positive. Plus four. So now I have one plus four, which is? Five. Five over, what's two minus seven? Negative five. A negative five. What does that simplify to? Negative one. A negative one, right? So my slope is a negative one. If you have a whole number, well, it's a negative one. I always put a whole number over one. Is that right? Well, let's see. They picked these two dots along the line. If this slope is right, I'm going to run one. Okay? I'm going to run one and go. Run one. Oops, I went too far. Run one, down one. Run one, down one. Run one, down one. See my slope? Makes the line. I can start from the bottom. It's a negative slope, so then I can just do the opposite. What could I do? Up one. Yep, up one over one, up one over one. Maybe left one, up one, left one, up one. Doesn't matter, just so you have one up, one over opposite. Okay? And your line is running in the negative direction. So that has a slope of a negative 1. If you would have used the two points that they used on your graph to count, they used these two. So that is what? We rise over run. So what did I have to run? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Like this? Ooh, good job. Negative 5 because we ran to the left, so that's a negative 5, and then we had to rise. A positive 5 ends up being the same, negative 1. What if I were to use these two dots? Negative, negative 1 on the bottom, positive 1 on the top, which still equals a negative 1. All right. Do these using y minus y over x minus x on the bottom. time to write these down and debate with your neighbor. So now, some of you, I know it's helpful if you're getting confused. A lot of people like to go x, y, x, y. They like to label them so they don't get them mixed around. And they draw their line. And x's go on the bottom, so we'll go, we have to go 2 minus our 0. The x's are on the bottom. The differences of our y's, so that our y, so we have our negative 2 minus 4. 
Now we can do the math portion of it. What is a negative 2 minus 4? A negative 6 over what's 2 minus 0? Simplify, that equals negative 3 over 1, which I would, I would, I would uh, accept that as an answer because that's the same as what? Which also equals a negative 3. Okay? So if you wanted to put this on the graph, you could put these two points on it, and then to find <coughs> some more, you would run right one, down three. Right one, down three. Okay? Do you have to simplify it? I would accept either of these answers. I won't count either one of them wrong. What if you do that as negative 6 over 2? This, I would, you would lose half a point because you didn't simplify that one. So Good I'm question. Question? Focum wise on the top. Why is our vertical? Rise over run. The y's, the y-axis. <coughs> okay. Rise over run, and these are this is our x-axis. Rise over run. All right. Number two. X y x y. What if I didn't go? Let's do them backwards. Did anybody do them the other way instead of going seven minus three and five minus two? Would I get the other answer if I go? Let's see. 3 minus 7 on the bottom, and 2 minus 5 on the top. What is 2 minus 5? Negative 3. Negative 3 over what's 3 minus 7? Negative 4. What is a negative over a negative equal? Positive. So what is the answer? Do you all end up with 3 fourths? 3 to 4 is your slope? Yeah. Yes. You would have got the same answer if you would have done 7 minus 3 is 4 on the bottom. 5 minus 2 is 3 on the top. You would have just ended up with a positive right away. Okay, and number 3. Let's go this way first. 4 minus 2 goes where? Negative 2 minus 6 goes on the bottom then. Simplify. What is 4 minus 2? Two? 2. Positive or negative? Positive. Good. A positive 2 over? Negative 8. Excellent. Negative 8. So now what does that simplify to? 1 negative 4. 1 over negative 4. That I accept. Or some say, well, Mrs. Leonard, what if I have... What if I have a negative 1 over 4 written that way? Is that the same thing? No. <coughs> yeah. Or how about a negative 1 fourth with the negative sign right in between? Yes. As long as there's only one negative sign there, you have it correct. All right, now, here you see your, is that vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Because if I subtract these now, I'll have 2 minus 2 on the top, negative 2 minus 4 on the bottom. Simplify that, what do I get? What is 2 minus 2? 0. 0 over negative 6. <coughs> so if it's 0 over negative 6, what is our answer for a slope? It's not 0 over negative 6. It is, it is 0. The slope is 0. Look at this. Remember we talked about skiing? If you're on downhill skis, you're going to go nowhere on that slope. Boring. You're going to sit there. That has a slope of 0. So don't leave your answer as 0 over negative 6. You need to tell me in those cases that they are, your slope is zero. And then, let's go to this one. You have your vertical line. What kind of a slope does that have? Undefined. undefined. That slope is undefined. It's crazy undefined. If you're a little skier up here and you jump off, you don't know where you're going to land. Crazy undefined. Well, let's see what happens when we subtract it. This wasn't on the graph and we can't see that it's a vertical line. Let's go to <coughs> minus a minus 4 on the top, 3 minus 3 on the bottom. What does that simplify to? Negative 6 Well, this turns into a positive, positive 6, so I'm going to end up with 6 over 0. You cannot leave this as your answer. 
what would your answer be? Six, zero. Six divided by zero. Zero. Here are six pizzas divided by zero. I'm fine. Divided by zero what? You can't divide by zero. That's, what do you do? That's impossible. So if you get the answer where your answer is a zero on the bottom, write yourself your notes so you have this and know the difference. Don't leave this as slope as six over zero. You have to write that answer as undefined. All right, last one. Get your answers for these, and we'll see if they match mine. All right, so you write them out, y minus y over x minus x. This is what they'll look like if you go from left to right. What does this one simplify to? 1 minus 5 is? Over? Do I leave my answer like that? No, you have to write undefined for your answer. <coughs> okay, what do I get here? 1 over negative 5. 1 over a negative 5. Is that simplified? Yes. yes. So then what would I also write beside my answer? Because it says then, tell me if it's positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Negative. I would write negative. So undefined answers only have one answer. It's undefined. Over here, what do I end up with? This turns into a plus one I get. Zero, zero, zero. zero over negative six. Which equals, you have to tell me, it equals zero. Or zero. Okay? You make sense? This is how you will do your homework. This is how you do 22 through 33. Now, just a quick review, because there's a couple review questions on finding the greatest common factor. Say I have 28 and... 64. How do I find my greatest common factor? Remember using the upside down division? Okay. Prime number only out here. Give me a prime number that I could go that goes into both of those. Two. Two. It starts, so that goes into there. 14 and 32. Is there another prime number that goes into both? Two. Two again. So two goes into here. Seven. Two goes into here. Sixteen. Do I have another prime number now that can go into both? No. No, I'm stuck, right? So I have these two numbers before I get stuck. What are? What do I do with those two numbers now? Times two. So two times two equals four. Four is my GCF, my greatest common factor. That means four is the biggest number that will go into both twenty-eight and sixty-four evenly. Your assignment. Page 407, 22 through 33, and also the review questions 41 through 53. Now 49, 50, and 51, you find your x and your y by using the zero, and then it says graph it. You do not have to graph those today, all right? Just find your x and your y coordinates using the zero substitution method.